welcome back welcome back my dear friends uh, sorry for the long gap which i have given actually i was a little busy in my research work so i could not post any video and today once again i have come to you with a new topic and this will be very very helpful to the medical students and also not only for the medical students but also to the dental students and also the, to the pg students so why because we are going to see the spotters how to identify the spotters easily we can identify the signs and uh, easily we can grab the marks so how to identify the signs that we are going to deal today so before going to see this video please subscribe to my channel so let us discuss about it uh, <clears throat> so first slide which actually have collected some uh, photographs of uh, histology slides randomly whether it is general or systemic now i will teach you how to identify the slides it is very easy to identify no need to worry about it i will give you some tips to identify and it will be helpful uh, to you in your first year examinations now the slide which you are seeing on the screen is nothing but what is a slide i will tell you some points to identify that so this is uh, <clears throat> the chondrocytes which we can identify here so these are all the cells which are called as chondrocytes chondrocytes so these chondrocytes they are present in the groups you can identify these are present in the groups and it is having a perichondria so uh, when you look into the microscope some something is looking uh, through the uh, through the objectives and looking your eyes so they are nothing that in, they are nothing but the chondrocytes so that is nothing but your hyaline cartilage so matrix also it is a homogeneous basophilic matrix you can identify so this is nothing but your hyaline cartilage Highline cartilage. Now let us see the next slide. So this is also highline cartilage, and here we can identify the same slide which I am showing you. And now coming to the another slide, let us see that. So what is this slide? Now I have just made it a little bigger. Now try to see here. So occasional chondrocytes can be seen. Occasional chondrocytes can be seen here. So let me show you that. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Here you can see that occasional chondrocytes over here okay so and very rows of chondrocytes are present can you can can you identify any pericardium no pericardium can be seen in this particular structures here all here all you can identify the chondrocytes you want to make a little bigger yes here you can see that so these are all the chondrocytes so these are rows of chondrocytes can be seen so very they are scattered very uh, rarely can be seen that so uh, other areas other areas what we can identify is other areas what we can identify uh, let me show you that So these are the chondrocytes which we can identify. That is nothing but your white fibrous cartilage. White fibrous cartilage. So this is how you have to identify the white fibrous cartilage. Now let us see what is the next slide we are going to see. Okay. Now I'm just moving to the next uh, next slide. Yes. So this is all the white fibrous cartilage only, and uh, this is uh, another image of white fibrous cartilage. Now coming to the another cartilage. Now try to see here. So in this particular slide, you can identify. These are all the chondrocytes can be seen. Uh, between between the chondrocytes, you can identify these are all the fibers which we can identify. So these are all the fibers. So these fibers are called as elastic fibers. Elastic fibers. So if you identify any fibers, can you see these are the fibers? Okay. If you identify the fibers between the chondrocytes, that is nothing but your elastic cartilage. Elastic cartilage. So three slides you have identified. Now next slide, what we are going to see? Yeah, coming to this what is this slide let us see that so in this particular slide we can identify all the muscles so these are all the longitudinally arranged muscle bundles longitudinally arranged muscle bundles so these are nothing but your skeletal muscle bundles now can you see the nucleus here so the nucleus is peripherally placed so peripherally placed multinuclear that is nothing but your skeletal muscle skeletal just moving to the next slide on the screen we can identify some black and white uh, tissue so this black and white tissue what is this black and white tissue so uh, in the black and white we can identify only uh, three things three things one is compact bone ts compact bone ls and the next one is nothing but your peripheral nerve so this is nothing but your peripheral nerve how to identify identify the peripheral nerve so try to see here these are all the longitudinally arranged axons these are all nothing but your axons here you can identify the adipose tissue and all which is a connective tissue which is covering that uh, nerve okay so these are all the axons so this is the peripheral nerve ls longitudinal section of peripheral nerve now let us see the next slide we are going to see yeah here you can see that there is a, a which this pink color one what is this pink color one 
first of all you don't worry what is this and try to see from inside to outside inside to outside what we can identify is try to see here this is all nothing but your endothelium layer endothelium layer just below that endothelium layer we can identify some space okay that is, that is nothing but your sub endothelial connective tissue then after that you can identify this is the, these are all the elastic fibers can be seen elastic fibers okay you want me to show a big, little bigger yeah here you can see that okay these are all the elastic fibers can be seen elastic fibers okay so you did you get any idea elastic fibers then outside to that you can identify these are all the connective tissue these are all the blood vessels once again small vessels and nerve endings also can be seen so this is nothing but your large size artery you can identify endothelium subendothelial connective tissue uh, abundant amount of elastic fibers in the tunica media and the tunica adventitia consisting of passa vasorum that is nothing but your large size artery now let us move forwards and what we can identify yes now we have come to a little complicated slide what is this or not let us see that so this slide well, how to identify that so try to see here so we can identify some uh, cells which are present and uh, and it is there consisting of a nucleus also try to see here nucleus is centrally placed nucleus and they are uh, overly present here also you can identify the nucleus and this is one cell and uh, next here also you can identify some cell okay so these which slide it might be so rounded cell with the prominent nucleus and these are nothing but your satellite cells so those are nothing but your sensory ganglion sensory ganglion or dorsal root ganglion now let us see that okay this is another slide of uh, sensory ganglion or the same we can identify centrally placed nucleus and this is the cell body uh, cell body and nucleus you can identify and the cell body is surrounded by uh, more amount of satellite cells okay that is nothing but your sensory ganglion and now here you can identify another cell another uh, tissue what is it what is it let us find out so here same thing which you can identify as you have seen in the sensory ganglion but let me focus let me show the position of the nucleus let me show the position of the nucleus now try to see here yeah, here you can identify nucleus is eccentrically placed nucleus is pushed towards periphery here also you can identify this is one nucleus this is one nucleus can you figure out clearly so nucleus is pushed towards the periphery so it eccentrically placed nucleus so eccentrically placed nucleus and shape is also irregular shape is also irregular so that is nothing but your sympathetic ganglion sympathetic ganglion it is consisting of uh, um, multipolar neurons multipolar neurons and they are consisting of nucleus which is present eccentrically so that is nothing but your sympathetic ganglion now very beautiful diagram this what is this now perhaps sometimes you know when you see this uh, picture as you can see the compressed part you may mistake that it is a vein but it is not at all a vein it is an artery now already have seen the large size artery and now what we are going to see is which type of artery it is so this is the medium size artery how to identify the medium size artery so when you go through the identification points of uh, medium size artery we can identify that internal elastic laminae is prominent can you see the line here so very beautifully drawn like line here you can identify so this is nothing but your internal elastic laminae so in the large size artery we could not identify the internal elastic laminae because of more number of elastic fibers are present in the tunica media there in the large size artery we could not identify you cannot differentiate the internal elastic laminae but here in the medium size artery the laminae is prominent let me show you another slide <clears throat> Yes. so here you can see that so prominent internal elastic laminate that is nothing but your medium size artery and this is the tunica media and then tunica adventitia so main points i will tell you remember that and you can easily identify that next slide we are going to see very good yeah coming to the another structure here also you can identify uh, just like this also comes under the vascular system how to identify these are the bundles longitudinally arranged smooth muscles can be seen and the collapsed lumen you can identify the collapsed lumen here all the endothelium also got collapsed and you can identify the muscle fibers are longitudinally arranged and the tunica adventitia you can identify circularly arranged smooth muscles so these are nothing but your this slide is nothing but your large size vein slide large size vein then let us see the next slide this is also large size vein 
and then move to the yeah here you can identify <coughs> collapsed lumen once again you can see collapsed lumen and you can identify the circularly arranged smooth muscle fibers you can identify in the tunica media and in the adventitia you can identify the connective tissue and all so this slide is nothing but your medium size vein medium size vein now moving to the next slide this is also medium size vein yeah now we have come to another system called as lymphatic system it is also a bit complicated to identify now i will tell you easy way to identify an easy way to differentiate all four lymphatic organs and all okay so in the lymphatic system we are going to see lymph node spleen thymus and the palatine tonsil so this is nothing but your lymph node how to identify the lymph node you can identify the capsule here invagination of the capsule and in the cortex part of the lymph node you can identify these are all the groups these are called as lymphatic nodules so this is a 4x a picture means the slide has been focused under a 4x objective lens then only you can identify the cortex and the medulla medulla clearly okay so there is all the, these are all the medullary rays and these are the cortex in the cortex you have to identify this lymphatic nodule so how to differentiate whether it is a lymph node or the spleen or the spleen now no need to worry about it try to concentrate on one lymph node one lymph node and you have just focused uh, i have just zoomed and i'm just trying to focus one lymphatic nodule so can you identify any vessel in this can you identify any vessel in it no we could we can we cannot identify any vessel in it so if there is no vessel in the lymphatic nodule that is nothing but your lymph node lymph node this is how you have to identify the lymph node now let us see the next slide so this is also lymph node yeah we have come to another uh, picture another picture called as uh, how what is this and all let us identify that so that is your 4x picture and this is your uh, 10x picture 10x of a lymphatic nodule let me focus in the let me zoom it oh, can you find any identify any vessel here in the lymphatic nodule no here also we cannot identify any lymph, uh, vessel here also we cannot identify any vessel so if there is absence of vessel if there is no vessel that is nothing but your lymph node it's a 10x actually in the examination they focus on the 10x you remember that you don't uh, you don't expect the 4x actually we focus the slides under 10x objective lens so you are going to identify the lymph node like this okay so that is about lymph node let us move down trying to see this also lymph node yeah you know so same thing lymph node actually i have taken pictures for a better picture i have taken two or three so uh, we can find a two or three on the same slide okay now we have come to another slide so what is this another so this also a four, what is a 4x uh, image i mean 4x objective lens the slide has been focused under the 4x now how to identify this slide what is this slide now can you identify the epithelium here so when you find the epithelium so we definitely you are going to identify it as stratified epithelium so this is nothing but your stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium and we can we are going to see some uh, mucus acini here can you see the mucus acini over here so in the submucosa we can identify the mucus acini then in the in the lamina propria in the lamina propria where we can identify these are the lymphatic nodules lymphatic nodules so stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelia mucus acini and the lymphatic nodule so this is nothing but your palatine tonsil palatine tonsil slide so that is how we have to identify the palatine tonsil this is also palatine tonsil yeah here is this is also the palatine tonsil here you can identify more number of mucus acini and lymphatic nodules also can be seen clearly lymphatic nodules okay now let us see the next slide is uh, so sorry for the posting of four or five palatine tonsil images and all okay now we have come to another tissue another slide so here you can identify these are all the dotted lines these are all nothing but your lymphatic lymphocytes lymphocytes and we can identify the lobules when the septum is present the septum is separating the uh, separating the thymus into different lobes lobes and lobules and in one lobe you can identify these are the dark eosin stain structures dark eosin stain structures of the medulla now i think you got it that is nothing but your thymus okay and you can see the rosette shape also let me focus yeah here you can identify 
dark eosin stain structures and the rosette shape that is nothing but your thymus line thymus okay you want me to focus another slide yeah here it is little good this is the these are the hustle scarpuscles hustle scarpuscles present in the medulla part of the thymus lobules in the cortex part you can identify the lymphocytes presence of the lymphocytes and connected tissue septa which is separating the thymus into lobules this is also the thymus here you can see the hustle scarpuscles can you find out clearly yeah beautiful diagrams yeah, this is also thymus now we have come to another lymphatic organ so what is this you may thought it as lymph node but it is not a lymph node then how to identify or differentiate lymph node another one is so already have seen uh, lymph node we have seen then the thymus we have seen and paradigm tonsil we have seen so the leftover one is the spleen so how to identify the spleen we can identify the capsule here the thick capsule and then in the cortex part you can identify lymphatic nodules lymphatic nodules and in the lymphatic nodules we have to identify the vessel we have to identify the vessel let me focus the vessel yeah yes yeah here you can identify the vessel so the vessel is nothing but your central artery but it is eccentrically placed here also you can identify and here it is an artery so artery central the name is central artery but it is eccentrically placed so presence of central artery identify the capsule and the lymphatic nodules lymphatic nodules so and you can identify the lymphocytes which are present here that is that is a white pulp and surrounding that artery also we can identify some lymphocytes they are called as pulse periarterial lymphatic sheet periarterial lymphatic sheet so that is nothing but your spleen identification next thing so here also you can identify the spleen same spleen slide identify the splenic i mean central artery central artery so this is the better diagram better uh, photograph the central artery which is placed eccentrically so eccentrically placed central artery white pulp and the red pulp that is our identification point of the spleen there's also the spleen try to identify the central artery which is placed eccentrically now we have uh, moved to the next uh, system that is called as excretory system so how to identify the excretory system so in the excretory system we can identify the kidney so the first part of the kidney we can identify the cortex part we can identify renal pyramids renal pyramids in the renal pyramids you can identify the renal carpuscle which is consisting of the bowman's capsule can you see the space here so this is called as the which is present between the parietal layer and the visceral layer and this is nothing but your glomerulus okay so these are all the tuft of capillaries tuft of capillaries and these are the ducts pct pct so these are the pct and the dct pct are darkly stained and dct are palely stained and the pct we can identify some uh, c layer projections which are present towards the lumen so these are all the ducts actually you may identify these are the spaces but they are not spaces simply these are all the ducts these are all the ducts pct and this is presence of the pct and dct presence of the glomerulus presence of the woman's capsule these are all the identification points of the kidney these things we can identify in the cortex of the kidney and this is a better image you can identify clearly yeah so identification i mean presence of the bowman's capsule presence of the tuft of capillaries proximal convoluted tubule distal convoluted tubule here you can identify distal pale strained one okay and these are all the nephrons these are all the nephrons yeah here also we can identify the identification of the kidney these are all the points to identify the kidney now moving to the next part after kidney we can identify the ureter ureter how to identify the ureter yeah this is the beautiful picture of uh, ureter so try to identify the towards lumen star shaped you can lumen you can identify you can see the star shaped lumen and the lumen uh, towards the lumen you can identify it is lined by uh, transitional epithelium so we can see the dome shaped cells over above so these are dome shaped cells okay so these are the transitional epithelium or urothelium presence of transitional epithelium or urothelium and a star shaped lumen and you can identify the smooth muscle layers smooth muscle layers in the tunica muscularis externa 
muscularis externa, inner circular, outer circular, and middle longitudinal muscle coat we can identify. Okay, that is nothing but your uh, ureter, ureter slide. And uh, this is also ureter slide. This is also ureter. And now coming to the urinary bladder. This is a urinary bladder slide. So actually the epithelium got uh, separated from the lamina propria, so no need to worry about it. So identify, we can identify the mucosal folds and all, and it is lined by the transitional epithelium. That is nothing but your urinary bladder, urothelium. Okay. So this is a somewhat clear little clear image. Clear image. Yeah. This is nothing but your urinary bladder. This is also urinary bladder. Now, coming to the next uh, system is reproductive system. Reproductive system. So, how to identify the reproductive system? So, uh, we can identify these are all the rounded structures. These are all nothing but your seminiferous tubules. Seminiferous tubules. And towards uh, one lumen, I mean, if you take one tubule, towards the lumen, you can identify these are all the some. Uh, tail like projections those are nothing but your tails of spermatozoa tails of spermatozoa so presence of spermatozoa and spermatids which are present at the periphery and the mature spermatozoa they are present towards the lumen that is nothing but your testis identification here also you can identify the dark stained slide of testis and this is also testis slide yeah here also testis yeah, now let us move to the next the thing is, is this nothing but your epididymis. So this is the epididymis slide. How to identify that epididymis slide? So you can identify peripherally, you can identify the cuboidal cells can be seen. Peripherally, you can identify cuboidal cells. And this is nothing but your uh, epididymis slide. This is also epididymis. Now here you can see this picture, it gives, uh, make you confuse with vessel but it is not a vessel actually so this is not a vessel how to identify the vessel how to differentiate vessel and this tube what is this tube so this tube is nothing but your what is this this is nothing but your vast difference you can identify the epithelium here so ciliated epithelium ciliated columnar epithelium okay ciliated columnar epithelium that is nothing but your uh, vast difference and here you can identify the this is all nothing but your uh, fibro fatty tissue fibro fatty tissue uh, fibro muscular glandular tissue this is fibro muscular glandular tissue this is nothing but your prostate okay so these are all the fib muscular fibrous part and these are all the glandular part okay so some smooth muscles also can be seen fibro muscular glandular tissue that is nothing but your prostate slide prostate slide and moving to the next female reproductive system we are going to see the we are going to see the first one is uh, uterus these are all called as uterine glands these are all presence of the uterine glands and simple columnar epithelia with the cilia some places uh, these are nothing but your uterus identification other identification points you can uh, study and uh, remember so i will just showing you how to identify this slide presence of the uterine glands and epithelium study the epithelium what is the lining epithelium of this uterus okay so these spaces are nothing but your uterine glands uterine glands and this is somewhat clear picture of uterus uh, now this is what is this so here you can identify the ovary slide how to identify the ovary so at the periphery part at the periphery part we can identify primary spermatocytes and towards uh, in the in uh, middleary part you can identify the mature follicle mature follicle here you can identify the zona pellucida cumulus euphorus cells and the corona radiator cells over here corona radiator cells and this space is called as antrum antrum so presence of the primary spermatocytes and the mature follicles uh, presence of um, uh, zona pellucida follicular cells these are all the follicular cells and these are the corona radiator cells and these are uh, cumulus euphorus cells presence of these things are nothing but your ovaries right here you can see the carpus albicans shrinken part is called as carpus albicans okay so presence of carpus albicans these are all the identification points of the ovary okay and this is nothing but you are uh, i'll try to show on the side yes so this is nothing but your uterine tubes like 
uterine tube. So this also uh, it also appears like the vascular system vessel only, but it is not a vessel. It is a tube. It is also some places it is lined by the ciliated columnar epithelia, and some places it is not lined by the ciliated columnar epithelia. Okay, so this is nothing but your uterine tube or fallopian tube. So these are all the smooth muscle fibers which are present outside in the muscularis externa. Okay, so that is nothing but uterine tube. This is also uterine tube. Now we have moved to the next. Uh, picture is nothing what is this so here in this picture you can identify two different areas so this is one different area and this is one different area and these two areas are separated by it so what is this and all so if you see the this is nothing but your pituitary gland so this is the anterior pituitary and this is posterior pituitary so in the anterior pituitary what we can identify acidophils basophils and all so th these are all the cells which are present in this uh, anterior pituitary in the base of fields you can identify the non-myelinated neurons non-myelinated axons which are extending here in this neurohypophysis and this is nothing but your pituitary gland slide now this is also the pituitary gland yes yeah it is a 40x image anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary Now we have moved to the another endocrine gland. This is nothing but your thyroid gland. How to identify the thyroid gland? So the peripherally, if you see the follicular cells are present, follicular cells, thyroid follicle. These are the thyroid follicles, and the follicles consisting of follicular cells which are uh, cuboidal in shape, cuboidal in shape, and centrally you can identify the colloid. This is the colloid. If colloid is more, if the colloid is more, that is inactive in state. If colloid is less, that is active in stage okay active in stage now we have moved to the next endocrine organ now what is this so try to see here this is capsule this is capsule and in the cortex part you can identify some cells which are inverted u-shaped cells inverted u-shape here also you can identify here so these are the cells which are present in the Jona glomerulosa, Jona glomerulosa. So this is nothing but your adrenal gland, adrenal gland. So adrenal gland, which is consisting of uh, three layers of cells: Jona glomerulosa, Jona fasciculata, and Jona reticularis. In the Jona glomerulosa, we can identify rounded shaped cells or uh, uh, inverted uh, U-shaped cells, and it is lined by the pyramidal shape, or some places it is lined by the columnar cells, columnar cells. And the cell uh, size is a little smaller. Now, when it's just move to the move down to the next layer called as zona fasciculata, you can identify all vertical shaped cells. So these are all the polyhedral cells which are lining vertically, vertically between the two cells, two cells, I mean two layers of cells, you can identify the spaces. So these spaces are called as sinusoids. Okay, as you can see the liver sinusoids, here also you can identify the sinusoids, penetrated capillaries. So the blood has this is a adrenal gland is a endocrine gland it pours the secretion into bloodstream so where the blood vessels are present in the sinusoids okay these are all the sinusoids okay so these polyhedral cells are bigger when you compare with the jona glomerulosa cells now in the jona reticularis irregularly arranged dark stained cells so these are called as jona reticularis cells okay jona fasciculata they up, it appears like a sponge so these vertical shaped cells are called as spongiocytes spongiocytes and uh, i don't want to explain about the hormones and all uh, then moving to the medulla part of the adrenal gland you can identify the non-myelinated neurons non-myelinated neurons which are present here in the medullary region uh, sorry ganglion cells ganglion cells which are present in the medullary region of the adrenal gland 